hi, welcome everyone to the Tupton Norbu Ling Revitalizing Yoga. I'm Wendy Cook here on the East Coast near just uh, near Boston. And um, this morning, let's just start in a comfortable seat just for a moment and check in and see how you're doing. You don't have to change anything or do anything in particular, but just take, take a moment to acknowledge that you've chosen to use your time to do a little yoga practice for yourself. It's excellent. When you get the right yoga for you, it's excellent for health. You want to practice in a way that is good for your body today. And if we just take a moment to remember the bodhicitta motivation, so that if we bring up the great compassionate motivation throughout our day, then everything we do can be motivated by compassion. You know, live with compassion, work with compassion, eat with compassion, do yoga with compassion, experience problems with compassion, die with compassion, right? So we just take a moment that the yoga is something we benefit directly from, but it's with this very open-hearted wish that we bring benefit not only to ourselves, but for the benefit of all beings to help us awaken to our enlightened state. Bring your palms together at your heart and take a little bow towards your intention, your motivation, towards yourself and towards one another here on our Zoom community or YouTube community. And then you can release your hands. And from the seat, if you would like to change the cross of the legs, feel free to do that. We're going to uh, just do a couple of warm ups here. Start with some churning in your belly. Just move yourself forward to the side, back, and around. So you can bring your hands on the on the rim of the pelvis and um, you're trying to actually move the rib cage as well as you rotate the weight around. You can go in the other direction. Bring your hands a little bit higher, see if you can get the bottom of the ribs and move the ribs side to side and forward and back. So the, your seat is fairly still, but your hands are quite high up and you're kind of moving the ribs and then you can circle again in each direction, trying to move the ribs forward and back and you might feel the movement of the ribs underneath your hands. Back to center. Let's um, take a breath with the fingertips out to the side. Inhale and exhale, twist to the right, the left hand on the outside of the knee, the other one behind you. We're going to come straight out, hands back to center, inhale. And then exhale, twist to the left. So we'll just move in and out on the half breath. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, twist, breath in, exhale, twist, left, breathing in and out through the nose, back center, inhale, and as you twist, look around, look over your right shoulder, center, breath in, exhale, look over your left shoulder, Back to center, breath in. Look over the right, let the eyes look around as well. Back to center. To the left, look around with the eyes. 
And then next time we'll stay in for a breath or two, breath back in the middle, and then twist around to the right. So the hand behind you is on the fingertips and the other hand in front, and then take some breaths and turn in the chest, turn in your neck, turn in your eyes. And, and deep breathing so that the belly moves in and out. Mostly when I say deep breathing is focus on lengthening your exhalation. So yes, the breath wants to come in, but you don't have to think too much about breathing in deeply. Focus on exhaling completely and then the inhale happens more by itself. So one more long exhale, squeeze the belly back to the spine. Release, come to the center. And, and then again, exhale around to the left. Behind you, the fingertips are tented. And the hand on the outside of the knee, twist through the belly. Look over your shoulder. Look around with the eyes. Lengthen the breath, lengthening your exhalations. When you lengthen the exhalations, the inhale happens by itself because of the negative pressure that's created in the um, cavity of the lungs, in the lungs. Make sure you take one more long exhale, squeeze the air out. Back to center. And then with your knees, bring them a little closer together, a little further away. The main thing is not just is not to have the ankles pulled right back. Sweep arms out and up. And fingertips by your side. Actually, rather than by your side, bring your hands into the hip crease. Press down into the hip crease. And so the hands pressing down, and then you start to fold forward, look towards the floor. And then at some point, the hands can come in front of you, release the back of the neck, chin can come in, and take some deep breaths. You could let the body move gently side to side, right? So the body can move gently side to side while you're in your forward bend. So when we get in the poses, you can stay still, or you can take some gentle movements of exploration. And I often encourage that so that you can, um, it will stimulate your um, bones and soft tissue more to give you more information to figure out what's going on, where the stretches are, where the folds are, if you can breathe well. Finish a long exhale and walk the hands back and change the cross of your legs, other leg in front. Usually we go one way, right? I, I, I always go, let's see, you know, left on top of right. So it's good to mix it up. And fingertips by your side, bring your right arm out. And exhale, lean over, lengthen in the side body. Bring it back, inhale. Exhale, slide the left arm out, lengthen in your side. Inhale back to center. Exhale, slide over. You can turn your gaze down and keep your neck comfortable. Sweep the arms out, out and over. And then we'll come out and next time we'll stay in for a couple of breaths. So extend the arm over, breathe into the right side waist, the right side hip, through the ribs and out through the arm. And then take some circles through the right wrist, movement through the right wrist, some circles, uh-huh. And then reach out more through the fingertips, Finish with a long exhalation. Inhale, bring yourself up, arm by the side. Pause just a moment, feel that, feel the difference. 
And then the left arm can come out, reach it out, turn your palm over and exhale, slide out. The bottom arm gives you some support. Inhale, bring it back, moving in and out. Exhale, slide over. Coming back, inhale. Exhale, reach out, lengthen side body. Bringing it back. And turn the palm in the direction that you're folding over. And then next time, we'll hold it for a few breaths, reaching out through the arm and circling in your wrist, sensing the length in the waist, the ribs out through the arm as you ground the left sitting going down. Your gaze can be down, keep your neck comfortable. Breathe out. And at the end of the exhale, come on up, pause. And then this time, sweep the arms out and exhale, see if you can interlace behind the back. And if the elbows bend, that's fine. If they're straight, that's fine. And then you try and pull the shoulders back, let your head drop. Pull the shoulders back, let your head drop and start to forward fold. And at any time, at some point, if you want to let go of the hands, do that. Your arms might come further away from the back. They don't have to. And then at some point, you can release the arms and forward fold again. Taking four or five long, smooth, deep, comfortable breaths. And remember, you can always back out. In all the poses, it's not a one-way street, you know? You go in, you back out a little bit. You're just listening and having a pleasant and dynamic conversation with your body. But there's nothing to prove, nothing to achieve. You don't have to look a certain way. So these things are very important to remember so you feel that you always have choice in your practice. And slowly come up. So you can do a pose or not do a pose. You can go into a pose a bit more deeply if that feels safe. You can come out of a pose early. Come onto the hands and knees. So I, I, I say it, but really take it in. And, and even though, I mean, I do repeat myself because it's so important, but even if I haven't said it for a while, remember, oh, I can come out early. Oh, I can do something a little different. So I'm your guide and you're the boss. So spread the hands. Shoulders over the wrist, knees under the hips, and then drop the belly, breathe in. And exhale, breathe out through the nose, round. Inhale, arch, lift the chest, lift the heart. Exhale, look back between the legs, push up between shoulder blades, tailbone down, lengthen the breath out. Inhale. Long exhale. And one more. Going to your rhythm. You don't have to stay exactly with my cueing, but you know, you, you listen to your breath, let your breath guide. We'll head back to child's pose, big toes together, and knees have plenty of distance left to right so that you can bring your belly down. So uh, for some people, this is comfortable. For some people, this is not comfortable. If your forehead comes to the ground, do that. Otherwise, you can stack your fists and bring your forehead on the back of the fists. Let your pelvis move gently side to side, moving the waist towards one side and the waist towards the other side. So it's this um, side to side movement in your torso. And then coming all the way up and let's come into a, a squat. And it doesn't matter if the heels come down, they don't have to come down, they might. But in your squat, move side to side, bring your feet a little bit away from one another and just transfer the weight side to side. You can come onto the tippy toes, lifting the heel, 
So you just do your best. That's it. Mm -hmm. And from here, as you start to lift your tush into the air, bring the heels down, keep the knees bent, feet hip distance, hang down, hold opposite elbow with opposite hand. If hanging down is uncomfortable for you, then don't stay here, come all the way up. But if it's okay, then let the spine be heavy. You can move the weight a little bit forward and back on the feet and a little bit side to side. Keep the knees bent, take a little more weight in the heels. Head heavy, let your head dangle. Then release your arms and sweep them out to the side. Keep the knees bent and sweep the arms out over the head. Come all the way up. Palms through center. Sometimes you feel a little bit dizzy, so hopefully um, not too much. Sweep the arms out. If you feel dizzy, it's just good to notice, so then you might come out earlier next time. Bring the arms through center and sweep the arms out. And down through center. I'm going to take a little movement for the foot here, which is a little unusual if you haven't done it before, where um, it looks like this. We're going to, we, you start on the ball of the foot, but then you roll over onto your toes. And it's, it's yoga for your foot and your ankle. Your whole leg moves, but if you can roll over, so you kind of, at some point, roll over the toes and stretch the top of the foot. It's a little odd. Yeah, that's great. And then reverse direction. And if your toes are complaining, just tell them, well, you know, come on, let's do something new. If you haven't done this one, the toes can definitely be like, um, excuse me, what are you doing? <laughs> Uh, we do, that's the nice thing with yoga. We try different things with the body. Let's go to the other foot. Just pause two feet on the ground. You can feel the difference between your foot and ankle, perhaps. Transfer the weight onto the other foot. And then you start to circle and see if you can roll over to stretch the top of the foot and to tug the toes a little under. Also, when we do it, when we're doing this, if you need to um, hold on to something, a wall or a bookcase or your dresser, whatever you need to hold on to, circle over the foot. We're also warming up in the ankle and the hip. Okay, could you reverse direction, hopefully, and then we'll finish. Feel that. And then something to um, warm up in your shoulders. We're going to take one arm at a time and we're going to bring the arm forward, up and behind and down. So it's a big circle. And in order to do this, we have to turn, see how my chest turns and keep your knees a little bit bent, reach up and then you can with your eyes, follow your hand and then You've got to really turn quite a bit if you're basically you're trying to do a great big circle. Reverse direction, reaching and letting your arm come out of your middle of your back. The arm comes from the chest and um, reaching all the way out through the entire arm. And then we'll, we'll finish with the circle where you go forward, up, back and down. So this one opens in front of the shoulder. Reach, so this is a nice shoulder warm up. Okay, and then we can uh, pause, feel the difference in your shoulder, your chest out through the arm. You feel which one feels more vitalized, revitalized. And let's try the other side. So the arm comes forward, up, behind, and down, and forward up, behind and down, and move so the knees are a bit bent, my pelvis turns, my chest turns. And so it's a little twisting action in order to get, that's it, big circles. 
And in this way, our arm is connected to all of us, change direction, because our, our feet are grounded, but we can feel that the legs turn, the pelvis turns, the, the chest turns. So then the arm is, is guiding and is completely connected to all of us. Sometimes we feel like the arm is like pinned on the shoulder, a bit like pin the tail on donkey. Sweep, finish the other direction. But the arm, you can let it reach from the foot and behind. One more. Uh, okay. So that's a really nice shoulder warm up. Sweep arms out. Exhale, interlace the hands behind. Squeeze back. Bend in the knees and then. Start to bring the belly down between the thighs. Let your head drop and maybe the arms come away from your back. They don't have to, but you try and squeeze the shoulders back. Take a couple of breaths, letting the head dangle, keeping the weight evenly between the front and backs of the feet. And then rise up, release the hands, sweep them over the head. And we'll take that one more time, but this time the other thumb is on top. You're gonna to squeeze back. And then just watch me at first, when you release down, then we can take a little bit of side to side as well. So when you're ready, hinge at the hips, belly between thighs, and then a little bit side to side. Swaying. If the arms are away, just do your best to squeeze your shoulder blades together. Elbows can bend, no problem. Then back to center, release, come all the way up. Inhale, reach up high. And palms through center, palms at your heart. So we'll move into a half sun salutation, and then we'll take it into a fuller sun salutation. Okay, so half sun salutation, you sweep out, reach from your feet, little bend in the knees, hinge at the hips, fold, hands down to shins, ankles or floor, head heavy. Bring the hands on the shins, come halfway, lift, look forward, and breathe out deeply, fold. Then come up, sweep arms wide, turn palms over, Root down into the feet as hands come over your head and meet, and exhale through center. Let's do it twice more. Inhale. And a long breath out. Knees bend, hinge at the hips, hands, uh, shins, ankles, or floor. Halfway lift. Lengthen spine. Exhale, hang, drape, and fold. Sweep out wide, rise high. You can gaze to your hands and exhale, palm center. One more like that. Sweep out. Take a little mini back bend if that feels good for you. Little bend in the knees, hinge at the hips, hold. Long breath in. Very deep breath out. Rise out and up. Palms through center. Take a pause. Just before we do the full sun salutation, we're going to take some swings, arms by the side. So tap in your hips, lift the heels, and look all the way around. So it's um, turn the pelvis, turn the chest, look around with your eyes. So as you swing to the right and tap your pelvis, look over behind you, over the right shoulder or the left shoulder, lifting the heels up so that your pelvis can go along with the rotation. Okay, then back to your center, bring it back. Just take a moment because you know we've been we take this circular movement. So just take a moment to settle. Find our mountain pose from the feet through the legs, pelvis, through the spine, 
Palms connected, out through the crown, and then sweep out, inhale. Swan dive, hinge at the hips and fold. Halfway lift, then you step back to the top of the plank. You can bring your knees down, no problem. Otherwise, push the floor away and take a couple of breaths. So this is a strengthening pose. You can engage in the belly and engage in the thighs. Then bring the knees down or not and lower all the way down, lie flat. Stretch your feet back and bring yourself into Sphinx or Long Cobra where the hands are more in front. So you can decide there's also cobra hands back. You can do that. You don't lift very high. So I kind of like you to experiment where to put the hands or on the forearms. Mm -hmm. An extra breath or two or three. And bringing yourself down, hands back by ribs. And you can push either to child's pose or you come to downward facing dog. So down dog isn't for everyone. We will only do a couple. You push the floor away. It's really long through the arms. You press the top of the thighs away. You can inhale, tip toes. Exhale, press down into the heels. Do that a few times. Inhale, tip toes. Exhale, press down into the heels. And the hands press into the floor, and it's a lot of lengthening through the shoulders, armpits. Then at the end of an exhale, you start to walk the feet forward. The hands come to the shins, halfway lift. Then a long fold all the way down. And a second breath in the standing fold. Knees can be straighter or bent, just as long as your low back is happy. Sweep arms wide, turn palms over. Reach up as you root down through feet, palms together, exhale. Take one breath or two breaths, just a moment to land back into mountain pose, a sort of home base place. And we'll go again, sweep out. Second sun salutation, we'll just do two. Exhale, fold, head heavy. Halfway lift. When you step back, can you step back first with the less automatic foot? You know, we tend to do things always the right first or the left first. You can in this plank if you like to move a little forward and back. Remember, bring the knees down, no problem. Also, if you have wrists that bother you, you can do plank on the forearms. So it is you know, many ways of doing the pose that works for you. And you can always ask me questions, you know, before or after class. And then lower all the way down. Bring the elbows more forward. Press the hands down for sinks or long cobra. And in either case, you lift out of the shoulders. Stretch the feet back. Press the tops of the feet down. There's a little stretch in front of the hip sockets, the front hip flexors here. And bring yourself all the way down. You could choose to go back to a child's pose and you could do a variation of child's pose with the toes tucked under or back into a second downward dog. In this down dog, you bring the feet hip distance or a little wider and pivot on the soles of the feet, the roots of the toes, the, the, the ball of the big toe, and drop the heels side to side. And the pelvis moves side to side, and you push the floor away, lengthen through the side waist as the, as the heels go side to side. Then back to center, exhale, long breath, when you're at the end of the exhale, you walk forward, bring the hands on the shins, halfway lift. 
and exhale all the way fold in another long full breath you might draw yourself a little more into your legs if that feels sensible sweep arms wide turn palms over lift up reach and palms through center there you go so two sun salutations just take a moment simple sun salutations although i shouldn't say simple you know there's a lot of if, if it wasn't simple for you i understand like there's a lot of variations of sun salutations out there so this is kind of like one of the basic ways but i don't mean to say that it's easy for some people it's not easy Okay, let's bring the, and for other people, easy, you know, it's just, you just um, hold a pen. So bend the knees and bring your feet at the front of the mat, have your feet hip distance. And what we're going to do is transfer the weight onto the left foot and step the right foot back with um, the heel down. So um, when you're doing this pose, the feet don't have to be too far apart, but what you want to make sure is that you don't have your back foot behind the front heel. You want to step the back foot a little bit over to the right and the left foot a little bit to the left. So then you have a broader base. Hands can be on your hips and you try and turn the hips more forward. And it definitely requires a little bit of balance. Press the ball of the big toe of your front foot down. So this part of the front foot, uh, the base of the big toe, that toe mound you keep pressing down. Then go a little bit straighter with your front leg. You can have that more straight. Press the back foot back, heel into the floor and sweep arms up. And exhale, the hands can come behind your back. So you can interlace or you try and grab the wrists or maybe you can get the elbows, okay? So you try and get that. Then staying grounded through your feet, start to take a little back bend and a little lift to the chest. Just listen to your back, what feels good for your body. It can become a little unbalanced, so keep the eyes open and move slowly. So it's a little back bend. And then as you exhale, start to fold forward over your front leg. Front leg more straight, but keep the back foot plugged into the ground. Keep the back foot down. Look down, and then maybe your head can look towards your back foot. Pressing the foot into the back, the back foot plugs down, front leg more straight. Then you're going to come up, sweep the arms high, bring them onto your hips, and then bend the front knee and take a little push off the back foot and come and stand at the front of the mat. Okay, so then we'll take it to the other side. I'm going to transfer the weight. And so if I start with my feet hip distance, and then when I step this foot back, I keep it in the same line. So transfer the weight, sorry, into the left foot. No, uh, yeah, into the right foot this time. Anyway, the other foot. And then step back, and then check with your feet that the front, the back foot isn't directly behind, but it's a little bit to the left, front foot a little bit to the right. The hands on the hips and you turn towards the front foot and the front leg can be straight if that's good for your body. The back foot plugs in strongly. Press the ball of the front foot toe mount down and then inhale, sweep up. Exhale with your hands, inter, uh, interlace, grab the wrists or the elbows, try and bring the other forearm on top. Then you start to back bend a little bit, lift the chest. That's a little, but go slowly, keep your attention down into the feet, lift the chest and only 
doesn't have to be big back bend, but see how it goes. The gaze might go up. And exhale, forward fold over your front leg. Your front leg can stay straight. If it's too much, then bend it. Keep the back foot grounded and look towards the back of the mat. And if you lose your balance, something happens. Don't worry, it happens, you know? Don't worry. Takes time, practice. One more long breath out. Round into the feet. Bring the torso up. Sweep the arms over the head. Exhale the hands on the hip. And then you bend the front foot and you push off the back foot to come and stand at the front of the mat. Okay, then we'll take a half sun salutation to get ourselves to the floor. So sweep out. Exhale, fold, halfway lift, step, step, hold plank. And when you're ready, bring yourself and lie all the way down onto the ground and your forehead could rest on the back of your head. I didn't say that right. You're, you're Forehead could rest on the back of your hands, is what I mean. I'm sorry about that noise. Okay, we're going to do some leg raises. Some leg raises. So forehead could stay on the back of the hands. Stretch the toes back, the top of the feet back, and lift the right leg up. Exhale down, lift the left leg up, exhale down, lift the right leg up, exhale down, lift the left leg up, exhale down. The right leg lift, squeeze the leg, squeeze the butt, and down, and the left leg lifts, squeeze, and down, and then the right leg one more time. And down, and the left leg. And down, and then rest on the ground and just move your pelvis a little bit side to side. Then bring yourself into Sphinx again. Um, bring yourself into Sphinx, elbow under the shoulders, and then lift the right leg, sorry, bend the right knee, and pull the uh, foot back, and then extend it. Bend the left knee, draw the heel towards the buttock, and extend it. Then the right. Bend and extend, and then the left, and extend, and then both together. And keep the chest lifted so you're stretching along the front of the body, front of the legs, and down. And then one more. And slowly down. Rest a moment. And then coming onto your hands and knees, we'll take a low lunge. If you like, you can pad underneath your back knee. So last week, because of Victor's request, I did a lot for the front of the leg and a couple of different lungey things. So, but most classes I try and do a lunge because I just find them so beneficial. So you can step the left foot forward. If you have yoga blocks, yoga blocks are really helpful in this pose. Um, and if you don't have yoga blocks, oftentimes it's better to tent your fingertips. And the idea is you're stretching across the top of the back leg. If you're someone very flexible, you don't want to overdo it. If you're quite stiff, then it can be really a great thing where you press the top of the foot in, you're moving 
letting the pelvis release down. And um, an added is you can turn the toe under and straighten out the back leg. Did we do that? I don't know if we did that last week, Victor, maybe not. Yeah, and now straighten the leg, lift the kneecap. That's it, and down. Um, bring your front foot a little further back, Victor. Bring your knee down, bring, yeah, and there you go. Uh-huh, yeah, there you go. No. And then you can practice turning the back foot under and bringing it down and uncurl the toes. And turn the toes under, lift the leg for a moment. Oh, yeah. And then uncurl. And then let's bring both hands to the inside of the front foot, if you didn't already. And let your pelvis move side to side. This swaying the pelvis and looking over your left shoulder. You can look over the right shoulder, but it'll be easier to look over the left, especially if you let your pelvis on the right side drop, rotate. Okay, great. And then let's slowly come out of that onto the hands and knees. You can just come and sit up for a moment. Feel the difference side to side in your legs. And then let's take it to the other side. So right leg forward or your other leg if you were already on the right. And so the flexible people, I always have to cue to hug into midline. You want to keep some muscular energy and you don't want to just overstretch, overdump. Um, Stiff people, that's not necessarily a concern. So you let the pelvis descend, front foot underneath the knee. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So I, th that's it. Inch your foot one more inch forward, Victor. Yeah, they, that's it. That's it. That's enough. Mm -hmm. Then turn the back toes under, straighten out the leg. Oh, yeah. And slowly bring it down, uncurl the toes, press the top of the back foot down, and curl the toes under, lift the thigh, lift the knee, but you're keeping the pelvis quite low. And then bring the knee down and uncurl the toes. So there's so many different ways. Straighten out the back leg again. And slowly down. Okay, do that one more time if you like. If you're ready, bring both hands to the inside of the front foot. And let the pelvis move gently side to side. You can look over your uh, right shoulder. Let the left hip dip down. Use a twisting action through your belly and your chest and your neck to twist and look over the right. You can look the left as well. The right it will be a little more accessible. Pelvis moving, that's it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's it, yeah, when you look more over the right, lovely. Okay, so when we're all finished that, and bring yourself slowly out. And let's come and lie down on the back. If you want, you could put a little blanket under your head. Lie down on your back. Oh. Actually, having said you can put a little blanket under your head. For this next pose, don't have, don't have the blanket under your head because we'll do um, bridge pose. Okay, so have your feet hip distance and not too close to your, to your tush, to your sitting bones, a little bit away. Press down into the feet, lift the pelvis up and slowly bring the spine down. So we're gonna glide the spine up and down a few times. Peel, so you, you press the belly down, then you lift the pelvis, then the low back and mid back and upper back comes up 
Ground into the feet and exhale slowly down. Inhale, exhale. Pelvic tuck as you come up and you lift all the way up. And as you come down, one spine, one vertebra at a time, press the low back into the floor, then let the back of the pelvis and then relax at the end. And one more, up and down, lift up. Slowly down. And next one, let's hold up, bring it all the way up. Roll the shoulders under a little bit if you need to interlace. If you can interlace the hands, do that. You don't have to. You can also bend the elbows and press down through the upper arms. The tush squeezes a little bit. See if you can get a little bit of length across the top of the hip flexors. Ground down through the feet. Breathe deeply, lifting the tush, opening the chest, bring your chin in, the chin comes towards the throat, the heart opens up towards the face, and slowly upper back, then press the waist down, then press the low back down, and eventually the back of the pelvis comes down, and just relax for a moment. You can bring your feet as wide as the mat, do some gentle side to side, or you can also just stay still, feel the reverberation in the stillness. Then we'll do um, supported bridge. So roll over to the side and get your blanket or your big, if you have a big um, towel. So a firm yoga blanket or a big towel. Um, and with my yoga blanket, for me, I might fold it up into thirds. I should really put links to like which blocks and yoga. There's this one company I found that sell really great, these really wonderful Mexican yoga blankets. Of course, you're in the Southwest. I'm sure you can get the Mexican blankets very easily. But I, this quality, I found one in solid color that I really like. Anyhow, so just prepare that. You can also use a yoga block if you have one. So lie down on your back and just watch where we're going to put it is under the back of the pelvis so that there's like a nice real estate for the back of your tush. And then not too much of the low back. And what you do is then slowly extend one leg, pull the toes back. Then you can bring that back up, slowly extend the other leg, pull the toes back. And if that was all good, then walk both feet out and you can adjust the blanket so you get a lot of support. Not too much low back arch, of course there is some but support the tailbone as well. Don't let the tailbone hang off your blanket. And extend the legs out, you can pull toes back. And then if that all feels good, you can just let the legs relax and the toes release out and the arms nice and wide. So you're just always listening and then I'm not there, you know, I can't see you in person, so it's hard for me to give, um, you know, specific tips or adjust my cues. So it just means you have to listen and make your choices and be empowered to do something or not do it or do it differently. It's, it's definitely um, an exploration, your personal exploration on seeing what works. And yoga is, by definition, yoga is... Um, its first tenet is ahimsa, non-harm. Very first tenet is ahimsa, non-harm. So in our asana practice, you know, we want to take care of ourselves and take care not to injure. So it's yoga to decide, I'm not going to do that. I'm coming out earlier. I'm doing it differently because your body is giving you signals that maybe it's not the best thing for you. 
right? And then that means you're practicing yoga. <sighs> so another couple of breaths. Oftentimes people get into this pose and it can be quite a nice place to rest. And remember, you can also do it with the knees bent. I didn't say that, but you know, you can just do it with the knees bent as well, of course. Okay, so when you are ready, let's slowly bend one knee and the other and have your feet on the ground again. And you're going to lift up off your blanket or your block and move the blanket out of the way and come all the way down. And hug your knees into your chest and take some circles with the knees. You could also lift your head up and then sort of round the spine. Bring it down. Bring your feet down, lift the pelvis up, take the pelvis over to the left. Then your, bring your left knee into the chest, keep it bent. And the bottom leg, have your foot on the ground, but a bit bent. And then you're going to roll over onto the right side, right side hip. So bottom leg is, a, is bent and top leg is more bent. Okay, so we take into a twist. You might use your blanket bolster underneath the knee. Then open the left arm. And in the final twist, you want to actually be fairly comfortable. You want to be able to breathe. If extending the arm all the way open is too much, then you keep your hand on your hip or your ribs and just let the elbow drop down and open in front of the chest. You don't have to extend the arm. It doesn't work very well for everyone. Breathe so that you can feel your belly, how it's smushed in the twist. And if you take some breaths, there's this massaging effect in the abdomen. Massaging the organs, especially the organs of digestion. Okay, finish that off. Then bring yourself back to center. Bend both knees, both feet are on the ground. Then you lift the pelvis up. Take it to the right. The right leg stays on the ground at bent. Oh, sorry, I said that wrong. The left leg stays on the ground at bent and the right knee comes in. And then bring yourself over onto the outer left hip. Top knee hugs in, bottom leg more out. But bottom leg doesn't have to be straight. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. I've got my blanket to rest my top leg on the blanket so it doesn't have to go all the way over. And then you start to open in your shoulder, twist a little in the ribs. Low back wants to be very comfortable here. Wants to feel that you can relax. You want to feel like you can relax in your twist, whatever that your version of your twist looks like. And as you breathe, there's this massaging, smushing, twisting feeling in the abdomen. Your head can be turned in whichever way that you like. Another deep breath in and out, no rush. And when you're finished, come onto your back, have your knees bent. And for your Shavasana, what you can do, 
Let me get rid of this call. Sorry. For your Shavasana, um, you can roll your blanket, bring it underneath the back of the legs, opening the back of the knees. And this can be very relaxing for your pelvis, for your low back, when you bring a little something under the back of the knees. Legs extend out, the arms extend out. <sighs> and just allow yourself to do nothing, to soak in the benefits of the practice by being still, keeping your mind present, Letting yourself take time where you do nothing and you don't even have to think about anything. In um, where you live there in Santa Fe, I know you have these beautiful, big blue skies. So let your heart, your mind, your brain be of that energy, very vast and clean and clear. And even you can visualize blue beautiful blue. 